If you were to ask me which characters I liked most in ID95, well then, first off, and second, since you asked so nicely, it would be Gamekeeper. I like to think of Gamekeeper as the lid of a garbage can. Yeah, he's still trash, but at least he's at the top of it rather than the very bottom. I think of Gamekeeper as a low B tier character rather than a C tier. He's decent enough to usually stand a chance and isn't nearly as easy to counter as characters like Ripper or Hell Ember, but he's still bad enough from being an A tier character where I can't recommend playing him in high tiers because they'll take advantage of every single weakness he has and never let him play to his strengths. It's funny to think about the fact that just a year ago, Gamekeeper used to be C tier, along with Hell Ember and Ripper, and near the game's launch, he used to be considered the worst character in the game. That's right, he was worse than Hell Ember back then. That's hard to think about. Hell Ember has been kind of the bottom of the barrel since the game released. And yet, I was the most interested in Gamekeeper out of all the characters when I first joined Identity 5. Maybe because in my Dead by Daylight brain, being able to hook a survivor through a pallet was the most incredible thing in the world. Something that would never be introduced in a DVD. And while yes, they do have their own gamekeeper like Hunter, or uh, Killer in the, that game's case, it still isn't the same. Deathslayer can only hit survivors through windows rather than through pallets, which still means that gamekeeper is the more Chad-like of the two. However, we're not here to talk about Deathslinger, nor are we here to talk about Gamekeeper from Season 1. We're here to talk about Gamekeeper now and how you should play him. So let's get on to the most juicy part of Gamekeeper, his stats. Gamekeeper has the standard movement speed of 4.64 meters per second, which is around the same as Blood Queen and Guard 26. Gamekeeper's attacks are about the size of a bee's dick, his normal being 2.95 meters and his charge being 3.29 meters which are some of the lowest attack ranges in the entire game, being only slightly bigger than Violetta or Michiko's attack ranges. Now, his normal attack hitbox may seem kind of small and rather disappointing, but he's definitely packing in other areas that are even more important. That's right, his chain hook hitbox is fucking ridiculous. The chain hook is Gamekeeper's main power. After holding the power button, Gamekeeper will begin to swing his chain like he's a cowboy from a western movie, no, uh, not that one. He slowed while doing this, but when you release the button, Gamekeeper will throw the hook, and if any survivors are caught by it, then they will be pulled back towards Gamekeeper, even through obstacles like pallets and windows, and occasionally the fucking wall, because, like I said, hit hitbox is fucking stupid. Now, after Gamekeeper hooks a survivor towards him, he can usually do a couple of different things, including, but not limited to, talk about their day, make a cup of tea with them, give them life advice, or, the most likely option, smack him in the face with his weapon. Something worth mentioning is that if you just tap the button, Gamekeeper will instantly throw the hook, but smarter survivors are going to predict this and will usually dodge it, so it's a good idea to hold it for a second or two to track their movements. But, I hear you say, what if you don't hit a survivor and instead hit, let's say, Grandma's pie that she left on the windowsill to cool down? Is all hope lost? Should you just surrender right then and there? Should you try to bake a new pie before Grandma comes back? Well, it's already too late for that last one, viewer. I can already hear Grandma's keys jingling outside, but for the other ones, I can have an answer for that. If Gamekeeper's hook manages to hit a wall, then he'll be pulled towards it, hopefully allowing you to at least close some distance between you and the survivor. Plus, you also get to throw what the hook one more time before it goes on cooldown, but you only have 8 seconds to use it again, so make it count. But, what if you hit nothing at all? Well then get fucked, idiot. Don't miss next game. Something else worth mentioning is that the force in which Gamekeeper uses to slam his nuts into the wall creates a shockwave around it. Any survivors within range of the shockwave have their movement speed and vaulting speed reduced. Movement speed by 13% and vaulting speed by 20%, and it lasts for 5 seconds. The movement speed debuff can be stacked up to 3 times, but the vaulting speed remains at 20% all the time. So don't think that you can get an easy terror shock just by humping the wall a couple of times. Speaking of Terror Shocks, if Gamekeeper manages to hook a survivor while they're vaulting or rescuing, they'll get a Terror Shock and receive 100% of normal damage, regardless of how high your presence is. After which, you can just down them normally with your basic attack. And now that we're talking about presence, nailing all of those transitions today, you'll love to see it. When you reach first presence, Gamekeeper's hook will now do 50% of normal damage when it hits a survivor, which can be used to make a mercenary's job a hell of a lot harder now that his delayed damage isn't going to do much against you. This chip damage can be useful for keeping survivors on edge because all it takes is one more hit with a chain for them to be up shit creek and on a rocket chair. It's why I think a good strategy would be to give everyone a bit of chip damage when you have the time so that later on everybody's too afraid to go for a rescue. Of course, watch out for these guys. 
You remember when I said Gamekeeper could stack the speed debuff three times despite the fact that he can only use the hook one additional time? Well, his second present skill allows him to get that third stack by allowing him to throw the chain a third time. And a fourth. And fifth. And a hundred times if he wants. Gamekeeper's second present skill allows him to have unlimited uses of his hook as long as you hit a wall. With the first two having an 8 second window in which you can use it before going on cooldown, while the subsequent throws only give you 3 seconds. You might think that 3 seconds isn't a lot to be able to catch a survivor with your hook. It's not. If you miss your first 3 hooks, then it's better to let the stupid thing go on cooldown than to try and draw your power out. The primary use for the unlimited hooks is mobility. By using the unlimited hooks to quickly pull yourself towards walls, you can traverse between different areas faster than if you tried walking to them. And that should be it for the chain hook. That was a lot to take in, wasn't it? Well, sit the fuck back down because we aren't done yet. Because I still haven't talked about Gamekeeper's bear traps. I guess Gamekeeper was playing DBD one day and saw how Trapper could easily shut down loops by placing a bear trap. He realized that he had some bear traps in his backyard and could use them to eliminate his biggest counter. If only he played Nurse instead. Anyways, Gamekeeper starts with three bear traps that he can place down at his location. When he places one down, he passively gets the trap back over the course of 40 seconds which sounds like a lot in time, but it isn't usually too much of a deal breaker since you're not going to be placing traps down every 3 seconds. When a survivor gets caught in a trap, they're immobilized for 8 seconds and have their location revealed to the gamekeeper. Survivors can rescue their teammates from bear traps and also disarm them, so you might want to keep an eye on them or else you might be caught off guard when you need to rely on a trap to catch someone. One more thing worth mentioning is that you can't really place traps within 20 meters of a shared survivor, because being able to stun a survivor when they're trying to save just because you put a trap near them would be really unfair, wouldn't it? Moving on. The most obvious use for traps would be for shutting down strong loops like the windows on Red Church or Hospital, or for forcing survivors out of strong areas by placing a trap down at the pallet so that they can't really use it anymore. There are other niche uses for them, however. You can use it to stop forwards from stunning you while you're in the pickup animation. When you know a survivor's about to struggle out, you can drop them, place a trap at your feet, pick them up, have them struggle out, and then they will fall directly onto the trap and be unable to move while you recover from the stun, and afterwards smack them. You can use them to prevent a survivor with chip damage from transitioning to a stronger area while you wait for your chain cooldown. There are some other ones, but I'm going to move on to something else. Camping! If done right, Gamekeeper can be a decently strong camper with two different ways to deal with rescuers. The first is the most common. You stand next to the rocket chair while you have your chain out and wait until the rescuer is in the rescuing animation. When Gamekeeper hits a survivor with his hook at melee range, then the hook has no travel time and just instantly hits the survivor, after which you can down them using your weapon if you manage to get the terror shock off. You do have to be a bit patient and wait until you think the survivor isn't actually trying to fake the rescue animation before you can do it, but it is very consistent and very strong if you do it correctly. The second is more niche, but still useful nonetheless. You walk 20 meters away from the chair while still having line of sight on it, place down a bear trap, and wait until the survivor comes for the rescue, after which you have to try and hook them into the bear trap. If done successfully, then the survivor will be stuck in the trap for 8 seconds and have chip damage applied to them, which means they'll have to give up on the save unless they want to risk getting a second round of chip damage and getting subsequently downed. I was going to create a section talking about a bunch of miscellaneous parts of Gamekeeper, however I think I've already talked to you off enough, so here's all of that shit on a screen, right now. What I want to do is ask you a question, viewer. Why are you watching this video? Why are you trying to learn a character that isn't brain dead easy to play and isn't very good in the game's current meta? Alva can injure every survivor at once, quickly teleport across the map, slow the game to a crawl, and stun survivors with half of the skill needed to play Gamekeeper. He does basically everything Gamekeeper does but better. And yet people choose to play Gamekeeper. I think it's because they see a fire in his eyes. A soul that despite all of the pain inflicted on him by Fords, perfumers, and magicians, still tries to climb out of low-tier hell, where his other Season 1 friends and Percy reside. They see potential in his kit, and think that he could be A-tier if he was given some more buffs. They think that Gamekeeper is the underdog of Identity 5. Of course, I know this isn't the real reason. It's because you're all furries, aren't you?